Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a Twin Flame reading. So this Twin Flame reading is going to be special for those that are in no contact at all with their Twin Flame. So when I say Twin Flame, this could just be somebody that you have a special connection with. You're not sure if it's Twin Flame, but maybe you identify with it being Twin Flame. I'm definitely not here to confirm either way, but you just come into the reading that you know that you have a special connection with somebody and Twin Flame seems to be the only thing that has described it for you. And when we say twin flame, I know that in the past I've said it's just a label. Yes and no. The thing is that a twin flame is definitely a specific kind of contract. It is a very significant contract, but it doesn't mean it's the best. It doesn't mean that it's the most important thing in the world and it's the most important relationship over all other, uh, you know, situations karmic partners as well as soulmate partners can feel just as intense. A lot of people that are in those intense connections can sometimes feel that maybe they are having a twin flame experience. And whether they are or they're not, it really doesn't matter. It's what you do with the energy that matters. So the thing is, I know I've said that labels don't matter. In some instances, they don't. I don't like to get caught up in the labels, um, but you know, a contract between a twin flame and another, you know, a twin flame contract is different um, than a soulmate contract. So there is definitely a difference, but one isn't better than the other. And I think that's why I've said in the past, let's just drop the labels. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to just go ahead and not even follow an outline. We're just going to channel information from spirit using a variety of different decks, which I will try to remember to, you know, let you guys know what I'm using. So I want to go ahead and take a look here at what the opening message is from spirit when it comes to this twin flame connection. Okay. This person, and it doesn't matter how long your separation has been. It could be that you've been separated from this person for a few days, or it could literally be years. We're talking decades. Since I work with so many twin flames out there, I've heard so many different stories. Plus I have my own unique situation. And so it's not always the types of situations where <laughs> you've had a lot of contact or that you've had contact. It might have been a very long time, but yet you still share energy with this person, you know, you just do. Okay. So this right here is the uh, Gaia Oracle by Tony Carmine Salerno. What does spirit want to tell us here about our twin flame connection? Just opening up this, this reading. They want you to know here that you and this person are intuitively communicating. Okay, so my camera does go in and out of focus, and I swear there is certain messages that come through where the camera will do like this heartbeat, and it just did it. <laughs> so that to me is like a major confirmation that you and this person, even though you guys have not spoken or not speaking or have not spoken in a very long time, there is a special communication that takes place between the two of you. This says silent whispers of the heart. You guys are in silence. You guys are not speaking yet. Your heart whispers to one another. Your hearts are communicating. You're intuitively communicating. Your heart spaces are still communicating and feeling one another. That is amazing energy and an amazing opening message. So if you felt that you're not sure whether or not this person, are they still, I mean, you feel them, are they still with you? Okay. And depending on where they're at in their process of awakening or whatever the situation is, as evolved as they are, the thing is they are connected to you in some way, whether or not it's all the time, like you, whether or not it's at the intensity level that you're experiencing, this person is connected to you and spirit wants you to know that next message. We have reflection. Ooh -hoo. So what I'm getting from this card here, what spirit is telling us is we have illusion, self-examination and distortion. So there is an amount of reflecting and I'm also getting projection as well uh, that has transpired between you and this person in the past. It may even be happening right now. So what I'm getting is current energy first, which is people are reflecting right now. They're reflecting on the past. They're reflecting on things that are causing them distortion in their lives right now. So basically, they're taking time to self-evaluate, self-examine, and basically get through the illusions and the distortion of their thoughts up until this point. 
I'm also getting that they may be reflecting upon the past, their past actions, who they were in the past, where they may not have been so clear in the past, why they felt those things in the past. And now the third message that I'm getting is projecting. What I am getting is that in the past, if they or you watching this video had projected something out as in maybe something was said in regards to something that was negative, something that was hurtful. This was a reflection of how that person felt about themselves. And I mean, this really goes for anybody in life. Usually the shit that you're spewing out is a reflection upon you. It's how you feel about yourself. It's the energy that you're feeling within yourself. And the thing is, none of us are perfect. We're all constantly doing that. Even the most evolved beings, I feel, still we're in the 3D world. We're still dealing with our ego. And unless we have ascended to the next level and we're no longer of the spirit, you know, this, this world, we're still dealing with some portion of our ego and battling it at some level. Okay, so we're not meant to be perfect here. But at least that's my opinion. Somebody might feel different. Um, but so the thing is, is that we're meant to reflect when it comes to them. They're re meant to reflect when it comes to us. There was something that maybe somebody was projecting onto you because of how they felt about themselves. And maybe you're starting to realize this, the person watching this video. Maybe this has actually helped you to see through the illusion, through the crap that they projected onto you. You've come full circle with this. You've realized it was about them. It wasn't about you. Okay. That's just what I'm getting from this. So your distorted views of the past, your distorted views of just being in the state of illusion. You're not sure where you're at. You're not sure what this connection is. You're not sure why you feel this way. You're not sure why you're still connected to this person. We have some kind of, you've taken the time to reflect. You know what the situation is. You know what this connection means. You know what it is for you and no one's telling you different and it is the way that it is. So we have self-examination. Now you can examine yourself through this person's projections. You can examine yourself now from all this time and space that has occurred between the two of you. You've taken the time to examine who you are. You know who you are. You might still be going through certain distorting thoughts and also illusions, but you're getting through the stuff. I'm getting that this other person is also doing the same thing. Whether they realize it or not, they are reflecting something. They're looking at themselves. They're examining themselves on a deep level. And it does have something to do with you. Now, I just did the reading the other day and that is the message. And I feel like it is a message that's coming through again. And we have moonlight. We have two cards that show a moon, okay? And I don't know, I mean, that kind of looks like a moon. I'm pretty sure it is a moon. Kind of looks like sun, but I don't think it is. It's dark. But the moonlight, we have travel, romance, and potential. So there is something about the moon here. And the moon to me um, is, a, is a time for reflection, which is exactly what this card is talking about. Moon in tarot literally is about a time for us to examine our illusions, to basically see, trust our subconscious when it comes to navigating us through the darkness, because the sun is not there to illuminate our way. We must rely on our subconscious, our intuition in order to move us through the darkness. And so I kind of feel a little bit of a, of a navigation with this card here that we've learned to navigate through this darkness. We've learned that we are intuitively connected and spiritually and energetically connected with our twin flame. So we've kind of come past the illusion that there really is a separation. There's not a separation, at least not energetically. There may be a separation between the two of you in the 3D world, but you've, you, you've been either on this journey for so long that you're, you're, you already get this. You already understand that there is no separation, okay? So now we have travel, we have romance, and we have potential. So this could be an indication here that what's happening is that there is this opportunity possibly in the future to travel, to experience romance, and there could be potential for this connection. That could be one of the things that Spirit is trying to say. But what I'm getting here is that I'm getting 5D travel here. I'm getting 5D connection here. I'm getting that that is where you are connecting with your twin flame, this individual. That is where you are also building the potential of possibly 
coming together with this person again in the future. I'm getting something about visualizations, creative visualizations, meditations, healing meditations, things that you're doing in order to heal yourself and let go of certain circumstances and things that may be holding you back. So it's by the moonlight that you're doing this energy work. It might not be by the moonlight that you're do, everybody's doing this, but it could be some connection to you and the moon. It could be that you're dealing with an astrological sign that is connected to the moon. That would be Cancer. And tarot, it is connected to Pisces. So there is this energy here, possibly of a water sign individual that you're connecting to, but it doesn't have to be. I always like to throw it out there though. So there is something here. So that's what Spirit wanted to tell us right from the get-go, is that we are connected, that we have taken the time to reflect, and this person may be in this energy of reflecting as well. Whatever has been projected onto us or onto them was more of a reflection on how we were. So it's about not taking it personally and using that energy to heal from it and not continue to feel like a victim. And Moonlight which is we are connecting with this person, maybe in our dreams, we're connecting with this person on the astral plane through time travel, uh, through the fifth dimension, and we're having romance and potential is being created with our creative visualizations. So beautiful messages, spirit, right from the get-go. Thank you very much. So now let's go ahead and take a look here at where we are at on our twin flame journey, okay? Where things are at, what we're experiencing, what they're experiencing. So we're obviously not with them, so it wouldn't make sense to see where we're at together in the 3D world. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at where this person's at and where you're at and what spirit has to say about it. The thing is, you already know where you're at. So let's take a look at where this person's at. I'm not sure why I was trying to see. You know where you're at. <laughs> where are they? This right here is a deck that I created. It's available in my Etsy shop. It's a twin flame oracle. Where is this person at on their journey? We have destruction. Ooh, so to me, I created this card with the tower in mind. Sometimes spirit comes in and basically destroys situations that need to be completely transformed. This person could also be in a very destructive time to where maybe they are just tearing things out of their life that are no longer working for them. Maybe they're in this energy because they just can't deal with anything that is solid. So they're literally destroying everything around them. I mean, any of these things are possible. We do have winter getting here. There could be something specific about you and this person when it comes to winter. It could be that you connected with them in the winter. You broke, they broke away from you or you broke away from them in the winter months. There could be something specific as far as being frozen. Cause I do relate winter to not only time and a season, but also what winter represents, which is things that are cold, things that are on hold, things that are not necessarily growing. They're frozen. So it could be that they right now are in this very destructive period of not wanting to share themselves, not wanting to grow, kind of putting their feelings on ice, their hearts on ice. But we do have ascending. So I do like to see this energy now that I've talked about this very dark, destructive energy. They are wanting to move forward. Okay. So what I'm getting here is that maybe things that have been on ice and have been frozen for a while. Something has happened here. They've had some sort of tower moment. They've had some sort of destruction happen in their lives. And what this has caused them is to start to now be able to move forward and ascend forward. And we have soulmate. So this is what I'm getting here because not your, your twin flame most likely doesn't know what the hell a twin flame is. Okay. I'm not saying they don't, but I think that most people are probably not understanding what that is. I mean, I've heard that for, I mean, I've heard that uh, term, I don't know, through books. I've been doing tarot for 20 years. I mean, I've heard it over the years through different new age books that like I've seen, or I've heard that term, but it really did not resonate with me what that was until November of 2017. So, you know, I personally did not start this journey. I mean, I have had a twin flame for a very, very, very long time. 
and thought I was nuts. But now I understand what it is. And so I finally was able to give the connection a home. I was finally able to give the connection a name back in November of 2017. Okay. Well, that's not true because that's when I did my first uh, twin flame video. So I always connect that as a special date, but it was in the summer months of 2017 where I was just like, Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Anyways, the reason I bring this up is because your twin flame may not know what a twin flame is. Most people understand the term soulmate. Okay. Some people believe in it. Some people think it's horseshit, whatever the situation is. But what I'm getting here for this person here that, uh, you know, I'm tapping in here for you today that we are channeling here today is looking to come towards a person that they can have a deep soul connection with. Whatever they were experiencing before, they are now interested in moving forward towards a soulmate, towards somebody that they want to have a deep connection with. Okay. So something has changed for this person. Yeah. We have spring. Now this person is springing into new life. This energy is shifting and changing for them. They had a tower moment. Something happened through some sort of destruction, whether it was by their own doing or the universe, it doesn't matter because all I know is that whatever was frozen in time for them is now coming to life. And now what's coming to life for them is somebody who wants a deep soul connection. So very interesting. So let's now go ahead and take a look at how this person is feeling towards you. Okay. So I don't care how long it's been. I just want spirit to let us know how this person is feeling about you. Now, if you just recently disconnect with somebody, and they basically, they're ghosting you and you know, they've, you guys had some harsh words. They did some terrible things, whatever the situation may be. This might be a little hard for you to take this portion of the reading because you're thinking to yourself, well, this person has put all this energy into ghosting me and they just told me I'm not what they want. They just told me that they, they, they don't re you know, reciprocate the feelings that I'm having. So now you're telling me that, oh, they really do love me. You got to take these messages as they resonate with you. Okay. You just have to, this could be this person's higher self. This may be what, how they really feel deep down inside. And maybe they're just not sharing that. I'm not sure we're going to go with what spirit's telling us today. Whatever they have to give us is what we're taking. So how does this person feel about you? How are they viewing you at this present time? How are they feeling about you? So I'm actually going to use two decks for this. We're going to be using the Tarot of Mermaids as well as the Oracle of Mermaids. I don't know who makes this, but this is from Lucy Cavendish. I'm not using reversals just so you guys know. Not today. So we're going to break this down in four categories. Mental, emotional, physical, as well as spiritually. How do they connect with you or feel you on that level? Okay. How does this person mentally either view you or when they think about you, this is the energy. Okay. Nine of swords. They have guilt, okay? Um, they could be losing sleep over either something that was said between the two of you, something that they did. There is some sort of guilt here. There is some sort of anxiety when it comes to thinking about you. Yep, look at that. Caution, secrecy, and wary. We have two nines. When this person is alone, so this is the thing. You know, maybe they spend a lot of time with other people. Maybe they are in a social circle. Maybe they're just hanging out with friends, family, partying up. Maybe a lot of them are dating, just dating a variety of people. When they are alone in their bed at night, they have thought about you. They have thought about you at some of their lowest points is what I am getting here. There's something about secrecy here. So if this person lied to you, hid you, hid your relationship, hid possibly another relationship, whatever the situation is. 
I am getting here that they have a lot of guilt over this, but I'm also getting that they have hidden their feelings from you and they're hiding it still. So that just means that if they are in some kind of discomfort or they are feeling guilt or they are feeling um, some sort of anxiety when it comes to you, they're not coming forward to tell you this. So you don't know this, which is why it's coming through like this. They feel this way, but it's a secret. They feel a lot of caution coming towards you. They might feel like they can't because of something that they did. So that is what is um, connecting them mentally with you at this time. So it's not the greatest, but I am just getting here that there is some kind of a drawback because of their own actions and their own guilt. This is their heart space, five of swords. Again, this is just continuing. This is a storyline that is unfolding. So if you're not resonating because this person didn't do anything to you, this reading is probably not for you. I'm channeling those of you that have been in a situation where there has been definitely some sort of heartbreak, sadness, even possibly betrayal. Five of swords is an energy in the heart space. This is a very deep, dark energy. And we have fertility. So what I'm getting here from this is this. Five of Swords is a fight. It's not a fight. I mean, it can be a fight, yes. So there could be that in the heart space, they know in their heart space that there's been something that has transpired that just makes them feel crappy. Makes them feel crappy with their behavior or their behavior or what transpired because of some kind of situation. It's Five of Swords is a battle that no one is going to win. Now, sometimes the five of swords can represent somebody who is going to win at all costs they're going to make sure that they hurt you before they can get hurt so it could be that they displayed some sort of energy towards you that was out downright cruel and they did this in order to protect themselves and that might be why they are now in this state of the nine of swords because they know that that really sucked they know deep down inside that that was a horrible way to go out with you, but they did it anyways. This person was in survival mode. This is just the, the way that they responded to love at the time or the way that they were responding to the way that they were feeling their emotions. And that was the way for them to do it was to basically defeat you and hurt you in some way. Now, for some of you though, it could be that you guys were battling so much that they just decided to pull out because they just weren't going to win with you. So this could be for those of you that this person just basically walked away and just like literally just dropped you, uh, you know, and just, they couldn't deal with it anymore. They literally just abandoned the whole situation. That five of swords can invoke that kind of energy and that kind of behavior. But on the flip side, the fertility card is a card of growth. It is a card of potential. It is a card of nurturing. So in this person's heart space, what I am getting, especially in the very beginning, they do still see a potential with you. Even after all of this crap, they still see potential with you. But I'm also getting too that in the past, that they did see something with you. They did, they did see the birthing of something new, the creation of something new, something that made them feel very nurtured, something that made them feel very good. It gave them some sort of an energy. There was an initiation period that the two of you had that was very good. But what I'm getting is that very shortly into your connection, this person started creating issues or problems. And the reason that they did is because they were at a battle with themselves. And so what they did is they projected something onto you. And I did see this early on. So they created a problem when there really wasn't a freaking problem. And the thing is, when I say this, you might be saying to yourself like, well, you know, they weren't really responsive. So I started acting, you know, uh, I started wanting to know what, what they wanted. And so that created a problem. You could blame yourself for something maybe that you did in reaction to something that they were either doing or not doing. This isn't the blame game. But what I'm getting is that this person's initial energy in their heart space was not good to begin with. And so because of that, because it was so conflicted in their heart space to begin with, it created the two of you to not be able to grow properly within this connection. So it never really had a chance is what I'm getting because of this person's heart space. Their heart space was the five of swords. And now they're mentally in the nine of swords energy. This person is still suffering. This person is still in this energy. It's like they may have stepped away from you thinking that you were the problem. 
thinking that the grass was greener on the other side, whatever, but it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't. And so they're still in this energy. They're still conflicted in their minds. That's it. So very major energy here. So let's go ahead and move forward into the physical world. Oh my God, it just keeps getting worse. 10 of swords. Holy shit. So the 10 of swords is literally, I have put knives in your back and just walked away. I mean, this is the ultimate pain in the tarot for me as a reader. Death doesn't even touch this card. This is so much freaking pain. This is present, okay? So what I am getting here, well, I'm getting two things with this card, but the Ten of Swords in the physical world, it's dead. It's over. You guys are not together anymore. And that's why I'm really glad that I said that this reading is going to be for people that you are just, there's no contact. You have, you're not with this person. That's proven right here with the physical space of you and this person. It's freaking done. It's over. It's cooked. You guys completed the cycle. And when I say completed the cycle, it doesn't mean it's over with you and your twin flame, but there's something happened and it, you walked away, they walked away, it's done in the physical world. You guys are not together. We have present energy. So presently, people are still either feeling the effects of this ending or they are starting to see the gift in it. And that's a really hard thing to do with Ten of Swords energy because let me tell you, when you're dealing with an energy where somebody put those knives in your back and you are just like, oh, I, it's so hard. I mean, the, the number 10 could be very specific for some of you. It could have taken you a very long time to uh, cycle through this pain and bullshit that you've been carrying around for quite some time. It could literally have taken that many long, that many times in years. Okay. Could be 10 freaking years for some of you. We could be talking decades. So this right here is there is a gift and a treasure in this there is a value in this ending there's a value with what's been happening to you or what's happened to you and this person so remember this is their energy towards you they're starting to see some sort of gift they're starting to see you now the value of you now after they have taken those knives and put them in your back okay or if they didn't put the knives in your back it doesn't have to be that dramatic they just walked away. It wasn't working. It hurt you. You were left devastated. You felt this way. Maybe they didn't stab you in the back. But maybe you felt dead. So we have now in the energy of the present moment, as in now, as in in their physical world, they're starting to see you in a different light. They're starting to see your value now. Some of them could literally be seeing you in the physical world in the present moment, which is why that's there. So for some of you, you might be thinking to yourself, well, then how, I don't get it. Like, how could they be seeing me presently? I mean, are they spying on me? Maybe some of them are. Maybe some of them are checking you out on social media. I mean, who really knows what the situation is? Maybe some of you don't have social media, so don't take that message if, if it doesn't resonate, but they're seeing you a value now. They didn't, maybe they did not see the value in you before because they were so focused on their heart space being in the five of swords energy which was just all fucked up, sorry to say. But now, now that it's over, now that the cycle has completed and they've maybe dealt with their own pain or whatever the situation may be, they're starting to see the value of you now. I'm getting regret. That's why that nine of swords is there. They're, they're regretting something here. All swords energy that's crazy. If I get another swords, I don't know what I'm going to do. So what is their spiritual, what is the spiritual connective energy between the two of you? Okay, it is the Seven of Cups, okay? So the Seven of Cups is a card of confusion and we have transparency. Okay, so this person, their spiritual connection, their spiritual energy with you right now, kind of like it could even just be a spiritual lesson. Seven of Cups is about choices. It's also a card of um, like disillusionment, fantasy. We're not sure what fact and fiction are because we just are so watery in our emotions. We could be um, having a lot of choices in front of us. And so I could, I'm just getting that this person may be all over the place. And I have a lot of energy or a lot of people that are presenting to them. I mean, this person could be very attractive. This person could be on the dating circuit. They could be around a lot of people. And so they have a lot of choices. They do. 
this person is not without choices. This person is not without a company. Um, but what I'm getting here is that this transparency card is talking about being honest, authentic, and genuine and present. I'm getting that spiritually, this is a part of their lesson. They might be able to spend a lot of time with a lot of people. They might have a lot of choices. They might have a lot of things that they can do and share their energy all over the place. But the thing is, they're not going to be able to be transparent with any of these people. Wow, I had all my cards just fall off the table. So this person is going to have a very difficult time being transparent. I'm getting here that they were transparent with you in, in a way. Okay. And it could be one of the reasons why they immediately went into that five of swords energy. I don't know why I'm trying to pick these up. I'm not going to use them again, so I'll just leave them. But they could have been transparent with you in the very beginning. Because we did have some sort of potential. There was in their heart space in the, in the past, there was some sort of potential. There was some sort of beginning of something here, something that was of value to them. And then something happened, you know, and they went into that five of swords energy and then they went into the 10 of swords energy and ended it and things are just crap now. But what I'm getting here is that they were able to be transparent with you and all the other things that they have gone into, all the other situations, all the other connections, they can't quite be honest and can't quite be themselves. And so that might be one of the reasons why your twin flame now is starting to see you now. They're starting to think about you now. They're starting to crave this connection with you now. So they may not be reaching out to you because they're hiding how they feel. They're not going to come. They're, not, they're just not, they're not at this point right now in their growth and development that they're taking action to reach out to you and tell you these things. They may be viewing you. They may be feeling badly about what they've done, but I'm not really seeing that they are coming forward and issuing you an apology. Not at this point. Okay. But I am seeing that on a spiritual deep level, they're not able to be transparent with anybody else, but you, they were transparent with you like for a second, but they immediately went back into this like shell of theirs, this five of swords energy. And the seven of cups is here to prove it. They got a lot of choices. They've got a lot of people that they may spend a lot of time with and they have other things going on. And that might be what, where they're, that might be where they are really holding off their awakening process is by being in this energy, being in the energy of just having a lot of choices and not narrowing anything down and not really, not really spending time alone. Because I can see when this person spends time alone, who they have to, they have to think about something and they don't want to think about it. They don't want to deal with that. It's like, that's you. It's like they're forced to think about you and they're forced to think about what they did to you. And that could just be a thorn in their side that they don't want to deal with. So they may busy themselves with other situations, but let me tell you something. They're not being transparent with any of those other choices. They can be honest and authentic with you. And that might be what scares the hell out of this person is that they, they've been in this five of swords bullshit energy for so long and this seven of cups energy for so long that they're having a hard time trying to narrow this down and just basically be authentic and real in life, period. So I hope that I wasn't too all over the place, but that's just what's being channeled right now. Um, okay, so what does this person truly want? Okay, do they want to come towards you? Do they want to change this in the future? Do they want to apologize? What do they want to do? Let's see. So this is the, the Tarot Grand Lux by Cheryl Marchetti. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle these guys here. These are Kipper cards by the same maker, Chiro Marchetti. Chiro Marchetti. So is there some kind of energy in the future where there may be some sort of an apology? There may be some sort of reconciliation, some sort of positive energy that this person may share with you. Let's see. Okay, you guys, so that is a good sign to me, judgment. Because judgment is we have taken the time to review our past. We have taken time to see the error of our ways. We may be apologizing to someone for doing them wrong because the judgment card is about you know the end of a cycle. It is about the end of a karmic cycle. We're trying to make, we're trying to make the rights from our wrongs. So right off the bat, I'm actually getting a really good sign from spirit that either they are understanding now that 
this is something that they're thinking about. Like I already saw it with the nine of swords energy. Like they know that they fucked up. They know they did something, but they are just not quite knowing how they are going to be able to maybe come towards you and create some sort of gap from this divide. I mean, uh, fill up the gap of the divide. So yeah, judgment call. Whew. So yeah, I mean, I, I feel pretty good about that. That looks pretty good to me. Oh my God. And we have temperance here. So if you're a Sagittarius or they're a Sagittarius, so that can be a special message for you that this is definitely somebody that's going to possibly pop back into your life and, and make amends. Because see, this right here, the temperance card, do you see those two cups that she's holding? This is a balance. This is healing. This, is, this has been time. It's taken time. But now we want to heal this. Now we want to temperance this energy. We want to blend these cups back and forth and compromise come to some sort of solution. So I feel really good that they may make some sort of effort in the future to offer some sort of apology and to try to help to end the cycle or end this lingering pain that you may still feel, give you some sort of closure or perhaps possibly move, move together, move on. We do have the eight of wands energy, which is communication. You guys, it is communication. They could literally communicate with you in the future. At least that's just what my guides are saying today. Wow. All right, two more. We do have the hanged man. We could be talking about a Pisces here because the hanged man is ruled by Neptune, which does rule Pisces. So we could be talking about Sag and a Pisces here, but just because those signs may not resonate with you doesn't mean the message can't be for you, but it could be special if those fall under the signs for you. Um, but yeah, this has taken time. This is something that's been on hold for a long freaking time. Um, but yeah, the temperance is also to me, the angel of twin flames. This angel is here to assist this twin flame connection. Do you see this beautiful angel here holding the two cups of the two twin flames, helping to heal, helping to balance, helping to restore, helping to basically just blend these energies together. And when they're ready, there may be some sort of communication. And now we have the ace of coins. So the communication is going to be a possible offer and it's in the 3D world. This is a tangible thing. This is somebody that's going to possibly even be making contact and offering some sort of a brand new beginning when it comes to starting something fresh here. And we have gift. There is something being offered. There is some sort of a gift being offered. It's going to feel like a gift to you. This is literally a gift from them to you to make amends. So if you're resonating with this reading, um, this just tells me here that everything that has gone on with them, all the suffering that is happening here, all the things that the two of you have gone through. And I know that I've really been long winded with, um, <laughs> all of these explanations. I'm not really sure why I went so deeply into this, but I just was feeling it. Um, yeah, the two of you are still connected and there's been a lot of time for reflection. There is this potential possibly in the future to ha travel and have romance. It could be that maybe this person is traveling to you, you're traveling to them and just kind of where they're at right now in their on their journey is things that were once frozen. They're destroying old patterns and paradigms and they're going into this ascension, springing into action towards wanting a deeper connection. And we have that the only person that they were able to be transparent with was you, even though they've had all these other relationships, they're still finding that they're not able to be transparent with anybody but you. And even though they put those knives in your back or ended things with you, they're seeing you in the present moment as somebody that's a gift to them now. And the way that they handled things with you in the past probably wasn't the best, but it's like they're, they're thinking about it. They're feeling it. They're they're feeling the uh, effects of what has transpired. So now that with all this new energy on, is there the potential that they would try to come towards you in the future to remedy this? I see yes. With all these cards, I see yes. And if you're, if you're Sagittarius and Pisces, that's probably an absolute yes. So, holy smokes. Um, so now let's go ahead and um, go into... Let's go ahead and go into what this person wants you to know, okay? What do they want you to know from their higher self right now? What do they want to commu communicate to you and want you to know? 
we'll go into these cards here, which are the um, Whispers of Love. And we are also going to go into these cards over here, which are the Chakra Insight Oracle cards. And we're also going to go into, what are we going into here? We're going to go into the Romance Angel cards. What do they want you to know? They want you to know that you feel like home to them. And they want you to know that uh, they want to have an intimate relationship with you. I mean, I don't know if it gets any clearer than that. They've worked on themselves. Uh, they realize that they have issues with intimacy. They realize that they have issues with commitment as well. Um, they have issues with their, their, uh, their childhood. They have issues that stem all the way from the roots of who they truly are. That's the root chakra and sacral. There's a lot of issues that this person has had from the beginning of their life that has really affected them. And especially with how the way they were towards you. So they have really either taken the time or they're right now really going through that dark night of the soul period where they're dealing with their issues in the relationships. It's, and when you have home, it's like, this is our home base. This could be our relationships that we have with our parents. So this person could be saying to you as well that it was never about you. It was about the fact that I just never felt, you know, either loved or safe as a child. And I know that might sound kind of ridiculous to some of you listening to that, like, you know, yeah, right. You know, like this person is going to say that to me. But that's just what I'm getting here from their higher self. They are letting you know that their issues with home, their issues with their past, with their family of origin, whatever the situation is, really affected how they were intimately with you. This really had a lot to do with how they acted with you in a relationship. So it really wasn't about you. It was about their foundation. And their foundation was shaky or their foundation just was not safe growing up. But I'm also getting here that the first thing that I got was that you feel like home to them and that they want to be in an intimate relationship with you again. Okay. Wow. We've got worth waiting for. And I had all this huge chunk, which I'm not taking, but worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. So what I'm getting is that what they are telling you here is that A, they're worth waiting for. And that doesn't mean that you put your life on hold for this person, okay? Just because their higher self is telling you this, it also does say divine timing is at work in your love life. So if you're waiting on this person, you have to realize that the divine is also at work here and it may not come when you want it to come. So you do have to let go and let divine timing take over. And sometimes divine timing is not exactly what you think it is. And so you have to be willing to just continue to live your life in the process. You know, it's not about stopping your life and waiting for this person and putting everything on hold for this person. It's just saying divine timing is at work in your love life, but worth waiting for. And what I'm getting here and this is a beautiful message from them. I'm getting this, that you were worth waiting for. Okay. You were worth waiting for, meaning that they may have left you a while ago and maybe it took them all this time to finally realize that what they really wanted in a partner was you. And so it took them time to come to this realization. You were that person that was worth waiting for. You were that person that was worth the wait. It could be that this person has never been married before. Okay. And not to say that this person wants to get married now, but they really want to put their best foot forward now when it comes to a connection and a relationship, they really want to commit. They really want to take things to the next level. We do see them wanting a soulmate connection. So now what they're telling you here is that they want to come together with you, this person that feels like home to them and they want to give it a shot with you and work on their, maybe their issues and come together and accept that, you know, you as a relationship to have a relationship with them and that, uh, you know, they're worth waiting for, or you were worth waiting for. One of the two is what I'm getting here. They also want to express love through a gift, a small token. So they may not come towards you immediately and actually say these words to you that maybe you're looking for. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but there could be some sort of a small token that they use instead to 
kind of get you to like see them again or to feel them again or to know that they care. There could be some sort of token that they literally give to you that basically shows you that they care. It could be very small, but like you get it and you understand it and you feel it and you, you know it. We have actions speak loudly, but what they're telling you though is that they know that's going to take more than this. They know that their actions need to actually match up with the words that they say this time around before they could have maybe said some things to you that you thought, oh my gosh, we're on the same page and their actions spoke otherwise. So they know that they're going to have to change the way that they are moving forward. So they know that their actions are going to have to speak loudly this time. And we have new love. They do want a new chance at love with you. There it is. They want to have a new chance at love, a new relationship, a, a new beginning with you. It's coming through here, okay? So I'm not trying to get you guys all riled up and to have hope when maybe there's none, but if this reading is resonating with you and this makes you feel you know, like you're on the right track, then this reading is for you. Maybe you were looking for this confirmation and here it is. But if you are naysaying it right now, shaking your head and saying there's no fucking way, then you might not be ready to hear these messages right now. This may not be for you. So let's go ahead now and get some messages from, let's just close up the reading and get some messages from spirit in regards to, you know, how they're assisting when it comes to the future. So let's get some future messages. Okay, because we're going to go ahead and use the fortune reading cards. And what else do I want to use? And we'll use the gods, goddesses, and angel cards. So this is just guidance about the future, okay? Guidance about the future. This isn't really the energies of the future of you and this person because I feel like I already tapped into it when I asked is there a chance that this person will come through and forward with either with an apology? What kind of energy? So I already feel like we went through that. Okay, so this is the thing. This is what we got here. We have mountain celebrations and plain. This says mountain, know that you are protected as you face challenges, but remain cautious. So spirit is telling us here that there is a mountain in front of us. There's definitely some sort of challenge that we are facing right now, but we are protected as we face this challenge and we should remain cautious while we go through this mountain area, go up the hill, try to you know battle the mountain. So we need to be careful at the same time. We need to take care of ourselves. We do have celebrations saying that you are ready to bring new and exciting things into your life. Fantastic. And we have plain, a journey is indicated either physically or metaphorically. Your life will become more full. There was some kind of an energy about travel earlier on in this reading. There could literally be somebody that's traveling to see you or you're traveling to see them by plane or it could just be travel period. It doesn't need to be by plane. So I was just starting to sh shuffle these and this is what I'm getting here. I didn't even ask a question. Someone you love is thinking fondly of you at this moment. This person is thinking about you. That is what spirit wants to tell you to close up this reading. They're thinking about you. You're thinking about them. You're on their mind. If it didn't, if it didn't ring a bell when we opened up this reading with intuitive communication, this person is thinking about you. This person has thought about you. You're not crazy. It's, it's, it's happening. So what's the mountain have to do with? What does spirit want us to know about the mountain? Goddess of shadows. What you perceive to be your dark side actually holds a hidden treasure. So what you what you perceive to be a challenge actually holds a hidden treasure at the end of all of this. All of this, all of these challenges, all of these hardships, all of these major things that you've gone through here when it comes to this connection, something's happening here. It's it's going to, it's a gift. It's a hidden treasure at the end of all of this. Celebrations. We have Angel of Emergence, which says it's time for the real you to emerge. 
So this is about you're bringing new and exciting things into your life. The more that you emerge, the more that you come out of your shell, the more confident that you feel, the more that you just basically take the time and have fun and celebrate in your environment, the real you is going to emerge. Your frequency, your vibration, it's just going to continue to rise in a positive way. And when it comes to a journey, a plane or travel, goddess of psychic protection, it says what you believe you will create, so if you want to create something here, if you want to create some sort of a uh, journey, whether it's physical or metaphorically, your life is going to become more full. So you can literally start visualizing this and creating this as, as you know, you want to create it. So you, what is going to happen to you is what you believe is going to happen to you. So spirit is saying to make sure that you are in alignment with what you want to attract. So that's really beautiful. And as usual, I'm never done. I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, we have 10 more minutes and then it's an hour. So let's get into some more messages. Woo. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get some messages. Just let's just, let's just go for it. Let's get some messages in regards to how you and this person are connecting on an energetic level right now. Okay. What are the, what are the energies that you share between the two of you? What, what chakras are you guys you know, really connected in at this time? What ways are you guys connected? Because we already know that you're intuitively connected, you're energetically connected. So let's just see what this holds. Okay. You guys are both in the energy of manifestation on all of the chakra levels. This is not just pertaining to one. This just means that Whatever you are holding in your, in your chakras, in your thoughts, your heart space, your, your throat, your, you know, your mind, your spirit, whatever, you're manifesting from this. So you're creating at every single level. So whatever you're holding within all of these different chakras, whether it's, you know, stuck energy, positive energy, it's flowing, it's not flowing. You're, it's like your twin flame is also feeling this energy. So if you have some dark or gray areas still in your heart chakra, I'm getting that this person is feeling that you are manifesting something on some sort of level to where you could also be experiencing physical things going on with different parts of your body. And it could also be that your twin flame is experiencing things as well. And it does have to do with how you guys are connected through your energy space. So it's a little bit of a, of a warning that you and this person are very connected. And so you might want to take extra, extra care and extra uh, measures to make sure that your chakras are in alignment. So that way your twin flame can benefit from this, from this energy. Okay. We have focused. This right here is the third eye chakra focused intention, focused thought you're connected. So when you're thinking or focusing on them, what I'm getting is that they're thinking and focusing on you. They're honing in. They, so if they have this thought about you and suddenly you're thinking about them, that's because they're thinking about you. I'm getting this telepathic communication here, that intuitive com um, communication. We also have rising from the ashes. And so this right here, these two cards are not related to any chakras. They're just extra cards in this deck. But this is literally rising from the ashes, surviving the pain, surviving whatever circumstances life has put into your way. So the more that you are in the survival mode of not letting shit get you down, I'm getting here that this is actually something that empowers you. It empowers them when they're in this energy. So you guys are literally exchanging this energy back and forth. It's very cool. And we have grief. So whatever grief that you're feeling in your heart space, they may be feeling in their heart space. So if you're feeling heavy or sad, they're also feeling this energy from you. It could be that whatever grief that they're feeling, if you're suddenly feeling grief, it could just be that you're feeling their energy of being sad and feeling grief and guilt and all those things. And we can actually already see that this person does feel these energies. And last, the more that you thrive in the material world, the more that they thrive. So this is a shared energy. You guys are both, you guys are both in all these energies thriving, rising from the ashes, manifesting, thinking about each other, focused on each other. But the only negative here is the grief. So I'm seeing something about the heart chakra. There's still something in the heart chakra that needs to be cleared. 
there's some sort of grief that's still there. It's a residual grief that's still lingering. And so somebody is having a hard time getting through that block of the heart space. It may be the one thing that's keeping them down from reaching out to you. So if you want this person to reach out to you, I'm not saying like, if you do this, they will. But if you want to help this person to unblock this grief and guilt and shame, whatever it is that they're feeling, then you're being asked to really make sure that you have cleared up this energy and that you have healed this energy and transformed this energy. You know, that's just what I'm getting here. So you're not meant to be perfect and it's not like you have to 100% do this and then they'll come back and they won't come back until, but if you want to help to, if you want to help your twin flame connection, that's something that you need to do. And if they're having a hard time, then send them that healing, loving light, send them that encouragement, you know, send them healing is what I'm getting in the heart space, heart chakra. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and see what angels are with us in our, on our journey. This right here is the Guardian Angel Reading Cards. Oh, this one that I just used, you guys, was called the Ch Chakra Mindset Balance Cards. We have Angel of Inspiration is actually with the both of you because I didn't ask specifically yet. I was going to ask what angel is with us in this connection. Um, but yeah, angel of inspiration was with the both of you. They're helping you to give you ideas, inspiring you. So if you are, you know, suddenly having a thought or something like that, um, an, an idea to do something, this is coming straight from the divine. So what angel is with the, um, with your twin flame at this time? angel of success, really helping them to succeed, really helping them to reach their dreams. So your twin flame right now just may be in a, um, in a period of their life where they're having a lot of success in the material world. They're having a lot of recognition and this angel is with them during this time of success. It's awesome. Maybe that they feel really down and they are trying to be successful and this angel is with them. What angel is with you, the viewer watching this video? Angel of encouragement, number 11, look at that encouraging you every step of the way that you can do it, that you can continue to move forward, that you will have victory in some sort of way. This is an angel that is with your connection. We have angel of determination and inspiration. So there is something about focusing on yourselves and thriving in your own careers that actually helps this connection. This helps the more that you're in survivor mode, the more that you are in this state of doing and pushing through, and basically just living your life, I am getting here that this positively affects your union. That's beautiful. Okay, so let's just go ahead and close up this reading here with, um, you know, what this person, and I know I already asked this, but I just feel like doing it again, so I don't care. What this person wants you to know, basically. Just let's, before we close up this reading, any last words from them? Anything else that they want you to know before we, before we go? Let's see. What do they want you to know? What deck do I want to use for this one? What do they want you to know? I think these are called the Earth Power Oracle Cards. What do they want you to know? Okay, so they want you to know something about childhood, and this actually came up earlier when we were speaking of their past. So they did earlier on want you to know something about home. There is something about childhood. There is something about their past. So they do want you to know, again, it's like that reminder. They do want you to know that they really were acting out of a energy of innocence, okay? Meaning that they didn't know any better. And I'm not to say that it absolves them of taking responsibility, but it just means that they were working with the tools that they had at the time and the tools that they had at the time, they were very childish. They were just very childish in their behavior. And that's what they want you to know. 
We also have music harmony. They also want you to know that when they listen to music, they're connecting with you. They uh, feel very harmonious when they listen to certain music that actually reminds them of you. So they're taking time to basically just listen to certain either types of music or just take time to sit there and listen to certain you know melodies and beats and this really does help them to harmonize their feelings when it comes to healing things but also thinking of you is what I'm what I'm getting here yeah sanctuary there is something about they go into a cave that they, there's cave that they go into that they've created for themselves is uh, a sanctuary for them this person could be uh, very much a uh, hermit they could be someone who likes to spend a lot of time alone they have a special cave that person is drawing or painting on the wall this person could be an artist for some of you and they go into their cave they go into this mode where they spend a lot you know like a long period of time alone and this is where they really think about you they really think about you when they're in this space and we have a vulnerability meadow they want to be vulnerable with you they do they want to be vulnerable with you they were vulnerable with you before but then they took it back they were vulnerable with you in the very beginning and then they retreated so they do want to be vulnerable with you again they want to be transparent with you again and we have radiance which is the summer solstice they're feeling your energy again they're feeling good about you they're feeling good period again is what i'm getting so even though they're going through some guilt even though they're going through some energies of swords um, where things are over they did some shit that just wasn't really on the up and up with you i am getting here that they are all around starting to feel better when it comes to their energy and so they're wanting to kind of spring back into life again they're wanting to add some sunshine to where things have been dark for so long between the two of you that's just what i'm getting and a last message from our guardian angels when it comes to this connection last message from our guardian angels about this connection and that's the one that wanted to pop out yep we got the hermit this is represented by virgo so if you're a virgo this reading could have resonated for you or you're talking about a virgo i don't know but there is a great reward in spending time alone. And that's exactly what this person is doing. They're spending time alone and there's great reward in that. The time that the two of you have been in separation alone, or maybe you haven't been alone, but you haven't been together. And this has been a great reward because it says, use these moments of solitude to focus on love and in ways in which you might give to those around you. Shine your light as an example for others to follow. Seek out a spiritual teacher or mentor of your own. And I'm sorry, I can't read this because I'm not holding it. If your life feels unfulfilled right now, apparently I cannot read from far away. So yeah, that's what I'm getting here is that they are spending time alone right now. They may be single. They, if they are with other people, they're certainly not making any kind of deep connections right now. Okay. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who they're with. It doesn't matter how many people they're dating. It doesn't matter what the fuck they're doing. They are pretty much alone. That nine of swords energy that came up in their mental space when they're thinking about you, they're alone. So, but this is a very spiritual time for them. They're going in. They're in that introspective mode to where they're really taking the time to enjoy their alone time. They're really going within their cage. It's very, I mean, cave or cage, cave. It's very much of a sanctuary for them. That's what, they, that's what they're doing. But they're starting to feel a lot better. Um, they may have pulled away from you for a very long time and they're just starting to come out of that energy. So it could be summer solstice to you here. The summer solstice just passed. It could literally be a year's time that this person is going to return to your life, that they're going to spring back to life. It may be that they're, they're going into retreat mode for an entire year. For some of you, in summer solstice, it may not be actual summer solstice. It could just be that sometime, maybe this summer, depending on where you're at in the world too to where you're at in the world. I think if you're in Australia, it's winter time. So, I mean, literally this could be, you know, a time marker of the future. This could also be an indication here of Virgo and Virgo is in September. So there is this energy possibly of the fall that they may be coming around again. There's something there. There's something there. It doesn't have to mean a specific time and date for everybody, but if you want to take it that way, that's what I'm getting here. I'm getting either summer, specifically summer solstice or um, Virgo season which I believe is the end of August and in September. Yeah. So could be, could be. 
Very interesting, you guys. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this reading. It was only an hour long. Ooh, only. <laughs> it wasn't an hour and a half, but I just, I don't know, I felt weird like closing it up early. So I just wanted to keep it going for an hour. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, if it didn't resonate with you, don't take the reading. Um, and if it did, I hope that it helped you in some way. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye.